internalizing right? Internalizing the scripts is key because at the end of the day, you don't want to sound like a robot. You just need to understand what it is, your, the, the end goal you're trying to get to, and then have your own flavor, you know, your own speaking style and getting to that point, right? So the scripts really just shows you what you need to know, what questions you need to ask, and what information are you hoping to gather to get to that end point, which is the appointment. Uh, go ahead, AJ. And I, and I think what, what Thomas mentioned is internalizing it is the most important thing, right? Like you, you know what the information you need to get, like you know what you have to get. It's just stylistically how you get it, right? Because he mentions like a script can just be like, hey, you want to sell your house? Cool. What price do you want to get? Great. What do you plan to do after, right? It's robotic. But if you can stylize it, I bet you Thomas has his own style of kind of just his flavor, has, builds that rapport, keeps it kind of nonchalant relationship. They're like, all right, well, Thomas isn't, he's not just trying to just get me to just leave my house, buy something else. He's like, you know, he's like casual, like, hey, yeah, we're going to be friends throughout this process. I'm going to guide you. I'm your consultant. I'm your agent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let's kind of just keep it on par and casual, but I'm here to advise you as a professional. But I, I think he made a, that word really speaks wonders to kind of us as agents is just really internalizing the script and then busting out your own flavor right yeah. your style cat mentioned you asked like how would you how would you approach a land lead right how you would approach a land lead is the same way you would approach a five million dollar lead a five hundred thousand dollar condo right it's the same lines of questioning right because think about when we're getting we, we deal a lot in online leads that initial call you are not going to sell them on that initial call that initial call is for what do you guys know? What is that initial call for? Booking their appointment. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're just trying to book the appointment. And as you're trying to book the appointment, you're trying to gather as much information for you to use on that appointment, right? It'll give you some time. I honestly don't want to sell someone over the phone on the initial call because I don't know what their scenario is, right? So as you as you gather that information and, and you book that appointment, now you have the information. You have time between now and the appointment to put up Put, put something together, right? To kind of formulate what, what the, their ideal situation may be. And then you present it to them at that appointment. Okay, so um, really quick. So we'll focus on buyers today. Um, and I wanna touch on the point uh, that all of your, all of the leads that you're getting, all the calls that you're getting, it's all gonna be the same script. So we just want to internalize what information we need and what questions we need to ask to get that, to, to move forward. Okay, so let me show you where to find the scripts. Can you guys see my screen? You didn't see my screen, right? Okay, so to find, find the scripts that we have, go to team PRG team resources, go to training, go to scripts, and then we have a bunch, seller scripts, buyer scripts. So we're gonna do buyer scripts for now, right? And then we have a few here. There's just copies of LP Mama. We probably need to clean this up a bit. And then there's also there's also scripts for your script, which is like the Ryu, like the objection handling type script, right? Um, and we'll we'll focus on the LP Mama, the basic script first, and maybe we'll touch on the Ryu and and some objections afterwards. Okay. And feel free to pitch in, guys. If there's a consistent objection that you're getting nowadays, you know, let's let's speak about it and let's let's see if we can figure out a way to to mentally overcome that. Okay, so let me exit out of my tons of tabs that are useless. Okay, so I know we all know this script. I know Thomas has this in, implanted in his brain because he's been in the, in the business for so long that he knows exactly what, he knows the information he needs to know to move that person forward uh, to, to find that home, okay? Um, so so on, on that Zillow call or on, on that Redfin call, you always wanna go down these lines of questioning, right? And it makes sense, right? At the end of the day, these questions are questions you'll need to know as an agent so you can best serve them, right? How are you going to know? How are you going to know um, how to help them if you don't know where they need, if, where they want to live? Also, what price? What their time frame looks like? Agent things like that. And the way that I do it is I I kind of go with the flow of the trans of the conversation. Um, if if uh, there if we start talking about you know San Jose, right? 
if I mention a property like, hey, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Seller or Mr. Buyer, I see you're inquired on a property in San Jose. Is this the only place that we're looking at, right? And that's another way to ask this specific question, right? Um, and then we'll go into price, et cetera. So um, Vivian, uh, Catherine, I know you guys, oh, Catherine's at work, but uh, Jerry too, are we, are, how, how do we go about going through this script as of lately? Because I want this to be more so constructive. I wanna hear what you guys are doing and see how we can critique because we have a pretty small group today. So we can, we can make this kind of personal to, to help you guys specifically. I mean, personally, it's been a while since I like dove deep into like, you know, each little detail, I kind of just have it down. And then when I could get to each section, I, I, I'm just able to do it. I'm not sure if I could customize it or like, you know, micromanage it to be uh, even better at this point, probably like, um, I'm sure I have like flaws still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm sure at, at the end of the day, you know, just be yourself on the phone, you know, just when I look at this, when I started off, I would just look at this, this part location and then ask them that question, however, however I was able to word it, you know? So I know a lot of people try to read this part of the script, which is okay from the beginning, but, but um, you know, try to build your style down the line. Um, I know you're pretty good on the phone too. So I, I know you're, you're following this to the T. Um, how about we do some role play? I think that would help, help from, for, for some of these agents. Um, who's free to do some role play? I think most of you guys have your camera off, which might mean you're not present so jerry how about how about me and you do it sure the lp mama script okay so i'm a buyer and you're the agent and we'll do okay. it okay all right ring, ring. ring. hello wait Hi. a minute <laughs> no good just say hello hello uh sorry let me let me reset Hi, this is Jerry. Uh, I'm with PRG Real Estate, and it looks like you inquired on some property. So how can I be of service to you? Yeah, Jerry. Hi. Yes, I, I inquired on this property. I wanted to see if I could schedule a viewing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can schedule a viewing. What time are you available? Uh, sometime today or tomorrow between 12 and 5 p.m. 12 and 5 p.m. Uh, would today at 5 work then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, you know, just before I schedule that, um, I'm just curious, is this the only property you, you've been looking at or how, are you just like shopping around? Um, this is actually the first property that we're viewing. We just started our home search. So just want to see what's out there. Hey, that's exciting. Man. Uh, and generally, what areas were you looking to buy in? Yeah, um, I'm looking here in Evergreen, San Jose. Evergreen. Uh, mm hmm okay great for the schools you know my kids i have i have some kids right now so i want them to go to some good schools i see i see so basically starting up your family and everything yeah all right that's great man and uh uh in terms of price uh, what price range are we generally looking at in evergreen price range uh from what i've been seeing i see i see homes listed around like a million dollars so i'd say i'd start there like a million a million is that something you'd be able to afford uh i'm not sure i that's kind of what i've been looking at yeah okay uh well if you're well because you're a first-time home buyer actually um and if you're not sure about your finances we actually work with in-house lenders mm -hmm. uh that could help you you know get uh get an estimate on what your pre-approval number may be is that something of interest uh not really right now i just want to to, to schedule a tour for the house no, I, sure, no problem. I just want to uh, best service you uh, how I can. Sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, what's what's uh, causing you to, you know, find a new house? Um, we're renting right now, so tired of paying rent. Tired of paying rent. Yeah, same, man. <laughs> uh, and uh, how soon are you looking to move? Like, is this a ASAP or you have like a couple months you could wait? um just as soon as we find the right property all right that's great and because you said this was your first property you're viewing i'm assuming you you haven't uh you haven't had it in, or you don't have an agent yet uh does that matter um a little 
uh, a buyer's agent could be a really valuable resource for you. You know, they'll look out for the market and they'll make sure you're covered on any sort of liabilities. And once you start submitting offers, then a buyer's agent would be um, very valuable in terms of, you know, getting uh, comps for similar priced houses, making sure you save money as much as possible. Right. So I'd say it's pretty valuable. Okay. Sounds good. Well, uh, let's stop. Let's stop there, Jerry. So I think you're doing good up until the point where you've been through these scripts a lot, right? Like mm-hmm. I've seen you do these, I've seen you book appointments, but I think having this screen and being in front of the training is kind of, um, um, you're kind of forgetting kind of the, the, the gist of, of booking the appointment, right? So um, what I would have done in your situation is, remember we were talking about that one time and adding sub questions to these, to these uh, uh, Thomas has some feedback. Now, I'll hey, Emmanuel, are you guys doing LP Mama or ALM for the Zillow Flex? It's kind of a bit of both. Um, in terms of, in terms of Zillow Flex, one thing that we leave out is the mortgage, right? Okay. And, um, but everything else is kind of free game. And yeah. then is everyone on the call a newer agent? Yes. Okay. So Except, yeah, my critique on the call was it just went too long. So right. we're transitioning over to your guys' team. We're also on Zillow Flex. It's all about setting the appointment. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like the conversation was way too long. Right. We just want to set the appointment and then get all the other information on the second call. Yeah. Something that I think you would want to change in your script. And who was it that was talking? Jerry? Yeah. Jerry, never ask if you can afford that. That's super disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Always ask, you know, have you been pre approved? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Something else is with the scripts, we, we do want to work on how we talk. We want to minimize us, ums, and you know. These are just filler words. And the customer is going to be so much more responsive to you if you're leading the call like that. So that's all I would add. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Kind of getting to that point sooner rather than later, you know, Um, make it a little quicker because uh, I know you haven't been on Zillow Flex yet, Jerry, but we've done some trainings. You'll have everything in front of you. Like it'll show you this person inquired on X property at this time. Right. Oh, okay. Um, so you'll be, you'll, you can just confirm those facts. Are you interested in viewing this property at this time? If this time doesn't work for you, what other time works? Right. Um, nowadays, Thomas, we've been on Zillow Flex for quite some time. In the beginning, we were trying to stick to a, a specific time frame for the calls. But since we've been with them for, uh, for quite some time, they're, they're, they're uh, open to us having longer conversations nowadays. So I, I usually bust out, you know, a few of these other questions. Um, and, and one thing I want to chime in, guys, is feel free to, to print this out and add some additional que- uh, sub-questions um, because that's where you're able to build rapport. Say this is not a Zillow Flex, it's just a Zillow lead, right? When I told you that I was looking to live in San Jose, you can easily ask, what's there for you in San Jose, right? Do we currently work in the area? Do we live there currently? Um, hold on, AJ. Um, and then when, when you talk about the location, okay, now what about the house? What kind of house are we looking for, right? Single family, townhouse, condos, how much room do we need, right? So keep in mind that you, you want to be more, what was that saying? Be more curious. Oh, be more interested than interesting, in, in this part of this scenario, right? Be really interested in what, what uh, their situation is and how you can help them. Like, why are you looking in these areas? What kind of house that you're looking for? Um, how soon do we, are we looking or planning to be in the property, right? And then when you go into price, how much were you hoping to spend for the property? And have we, all, have we already spoken with a lender to um, figure out what we're comfortable with? somewhere on those lines. Right, Jerry? Cool. So I think, I think, I think one of the main takeaways is just get there sooner. Um, don't have it prolonged too, too, for, for too long. And then uh, you'll be solid. For, for Zillow Flex specifically too. Go ahead. I think, I think one thing where Thomas makes a point as like, it was kind of a longer call, but I think it's going to have to come from how like engaging, because like the call can be longer, if the client is sitting there like 
you know, and you're curious, you're informative rather than kind of, oh yeah, you know, like, you, you know, I'm not bashing Jerry, like, oh, you can't, you know, can you afford this and stuff like that? It was almost like a, a slower draggy convo, right? right? But if you know the client wants to talk on the other end and they just keep talking, yeah, then it can be a little bit longer, right? But kind of how that call went, it was a little bit like the pace was just slow rather than like, hey, yeah, San Jose, it's a beautiful area. I actually have two offices here. It's an amazing spot, blah, blah, blah. And kind of get them going and kind of get that rapport building. And then you can kind of, you can hear it on the phone. I had a client that I did the same screw yesterday and he wouldn't stop talking to me. I had to be like, all right, man, like I got to go, you know, but you kind of have to give that, you know, give that extra oomph in the convo to kind of make it, you know, have a longer convo if, if it's, if it's possible, but you also kind of have to gauge the client where they're like, yeah, I want to freaking talk. Let's, to the let's give them an example. Um, Thomas, are you free to kind of show them an example? Sure. Like we'll do it together? Yeah. Cool. So um, since I'm doing the training, maybe I'll be the agent then. So, so okay. let's be the agent and we'll go from there. We'll switch off after. Um, okay. All right. Ring, ring. Hi. Hey, Thomas. Emmanuel here from PRG Real Estate. How's it going, man? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. I see that you're interested in the property on 123 Main Street. How can I be of assistance? Yeah, I was wondering if I could take a look. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can check in with the seller. What time and day would work best for you to view the property? Probably Friday at 5.30. Friday at 5.30. Let me check in with the seller to see if this is available, Thomas. Um, if this time doesn't work for the seller, what other time or day would work best for you? Uh, just Friday at 5.30. Friday at 5.30. That's the only time we can view the property? Yes. Okay, sounds good. Would like a six o'clock work too that day or is it strictly 5.30? Uh, yeah, I got some other commitments right now, but 5.30 Friday. Cool, so let me check with the seller to see if it's available and I'll get back to you. Um, okay. Is this the only area that we're looking into right now or? Um, if you're getting it. Yes, this is the only. Cool. And, and what I find helpful, Thomas, is, um, you know, once we're, we're, once we're on that viewing, I can put together a few other properties that you may be interested in. I know your time's tight on Friday, but uh, I can definitely send them over to you. Let me know what you think, and maybe we can make a day out of it or schedule another day to view out those other properties. Okay, thank you. Yeah, what, tell me a little bit more about what we're looking for. Uh, in terms of, of property, are we looking for something similar to this, like a single family home? And Yeah, something similar to this would be nice. Cool, cool. And only in Mountain View. Um, and uh, tell me a little bit more about what we're looking for. It's, yeah, something like this, just because I like the area. Mm -hmm. Do we currently live in the area? Yes, I, I'm renting a Mountain View right now. Awesome, awesome. So looking to, to get a piece of Mountain View for your own, right? Yes. Perfect, perfect. Um, in terms of price range, uh, do we have an idea of, you know, what we ideally want to spend in the market? I don't know yet, but I think this price is comfortable. Price is comfortable. Sounds good. How long have we been looking, Thomas? About a month and a half. Okay. Sounds good. Have we been following the market quite a bit? Do we kind of understand? Yeah. Not really. Just been seeing homes off and on online. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. And of course, we could talk a little bit more about this when we view, but the market is pretty competitive. So I want to definitely make sure we get you in there as soon as possible. Perfect. Um, and what I can do is if we're com comfortable with this price range, this type of house is what we're looking for in this specific area, I can put together a list of properties that you may be interested in, and then we can kind of go from there. Okay, perfect. Thomas, uh, do you have any specific timeline on when you'd like to be into a property? No, just looking for the right place. Looking for the right place. So no rush. Right? No. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so let me do one thing. Let me see with the with the seller uh, if Friday at five thirty would work. Um, I can put together another uh, some additional properties for you, and then we can go from there. Um, I good. have I have your email here at thomas at realestateprg.com. Yep, and that's correct. Number here at four zero eight eight three eight zero three four two. Right. Yep. Sounds good. So I'll send you my contact information so we can keep in touch. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I'll send you a confirmation for our viewing on Friday at 5.30, and we can go from there. Okay, sounds good. Perfect, perfect. Any questions before we end off, Thomas? No, that's it for today. Perfect, perfect. Um, 
so look out for the for that uh text and we'll, we'll keep in touch sounds good thank you cool awesome awesome so that was kind of that was kind of rough i would say but what do you guys think is that pretty straightforward i'd say that was more so a zillow flex call so yeah i do have a question actually yeah go ahead Kat. um so obviously in the beginning when i first started um everyone's like stick to the lp on the script um and then the other half of the people are saying like oh well let's keep it short so um i noticed in your call you didn't really obviously get like the dic Mm -hmm. um so are we trying to break these calls into two different worlds or are we trying to get to the lp mama script like quicker like how, like, i think it just that. depends on feeling out with thomas thomas brought up a good point about zillow flex this was in in my eyes a zillow flex call so i wanted mm -hmm. to be a little faster and the way that i read thomas thomas was kind of short right he was like oh, okay like like, uh, no, just just viewing today at 530 right, so I didn't want to keep him on the phone too long at asking him. Uh, in depth questions right if anything, once I book book the showing make him happy like okay we can view at 530 on the second call then i'll ask you know some additional questions right. Okay yeah, yeah. That, that was just my question like do like my question is break it down to two or go through it. With like as fast as you can. With a call like that, I kind of want to, to, he was very short. He wanted something from me. So before I get more question, more value, uh, some more information from him, I want to give him what he wants first and then get him on the second call, if that makes sense. What do you think, Thomas? Where, where, where can I improve in that script? I thought your script was pretty good. I think, so we were taught different and you know, once I role play with you, you'll see what I do. My script is a lot faster. Yeah. And it's all about setting the appointment. I don't go through anything. Yeah. yeah. And and this is solely for Zillow Flex. Correct. So our script is different because Zillow records everything that you're saying on right. that call. Right. So that's why we keep the call short. We just do ALM and then we get all the info on the second call where, where Zillow doesn't hear anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Part of why Zillow wants to call short is they just don't want anything negative brought up. They just want right. you to set the appointment. Right. But you know how PRG does it is totally different than what we're doing. So I don't want to, you know, tell everybody to do it. But you know, I could show you how we do it. Sure. I think I think there's different ways to do it, but I think that's the best way, right? Just kind of do it quickly and then get them on the second call. That's yes. I do too. Um, and is the second call like usually in the same day or is it before you go view the property? Usually the same day, like you, you text them your contact information so you can keep in touch and then you follow up with the listing agent. Once you have an update, just call them and then you can go down those lines of questioning with them. Okay, yeah, it makes more okay. sense now because I think like we're calling up tomorrow, but the little flex is totally different. I mean, not totally, but. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, there's a lot of scripts. There's a lot of different scripts, mm -hmm. right? And And kind of. It's just going to be subjective to every situation. Like Redfin, Redfin is like Zillow Flex. You just have to say a different word, right? You, and you know, obviously, all the same obviously information. Though. You're trying, you're yeah. trying to have the same objective for every single call that you do, right? Same questions. Yeah. Let's do one uh, with Thomas. I uh, promise you'll be the agent. Um, hello. Oh, okay. Hi, is this Emmanuel? Yeah, this is Emmanuel. Hey, Emmanuel, Thomas Fang with PRG. I saw your online inquiry regarding 123 Main Street. How's your schedule to take a look this week? Uh, I can do today or tomorrow between 12 and 5, Thomas. Today or tomorrow, 12 to 5. Perfect. After our call, I'll check with the seller to see if we could take a look today or tomorrow between 12 and 5, and I'll give you a call right back. Are there any other properties you would like to see on our tour tomorrow? Um, no, this is the only one, but I guess if you have some other ones, then you can send them over to me. Perfect. Justice one. And what did you like about this home, Emmanuel? Uh, uh, it's just in the area that I'm looking at right now. It's in the area that you're looking at? Great. I will send you similar homes nearby. If you like to see any of those, let me know, and I can add them to our tour tomorrow between 12 and 5. Hey, Emmanuel, let me check with the seller real quick just to make sure we can take a look tomorrow between 12 to 5, and I'll give you a call right back. Talk to you soon. Okay, sounds good. That's so yeah. I reiterated a couple of times that I'm going to give you a call right back. Right. I also reiterated your name a couple of times. Right. And that way I feel like the customer feels really good. Yeah. And it's just about setting up the appointment. So after that, I'll go on the MLS, mm -hmm. check what it is, 
and then I'll give them a call right back. And then let's do the second call. I think that was great. Straight to the point. That's how we started off. I think we, I think as a team, we, we kind of need to get, get back into that groove of just setting the appointment, you know, don't disqualify them after the first call. Just try to, yeah, if you have time, if you have the capacity, try to, to, to do it the right way, which is what Thomas. Thomas, one question I would have uh, for you since you've been on Zillow Flex uh, on your other team, what, what was uh, your guys's conversion uh, to appointment met? Just uh, keeping it straight to the point like that. Pretty much 80 to 90% on appointment met. Mm -hmm. huh? That was pretty consistent across the board. Yes. So I think that's how our team taught it, and it's really drilled into us that way. Cool. Yeah. And to be really honest with you guys, I don't talk about anything on the second call. The second call is just, hey, Emmanuel, I spoke to the seller, and we could take a look tomorrow at 2. I'm going to send you a calendar invite with my information and also the address. I'll see you then. And if anything comes up, just shoot me a text. The reason is, all the LP Mama stuff, it's all really good. But what our team taught us, because our team leader was with Premier Agent for like 10 years, spending 20 grand a month. Mm -hmm. It's all about meeting the customer face to face, right? You ask these questions and sometimes they're a little confrontational, right? They haven't even seen the home. They haven't even met you. They haven't seen your nice car, the way you dress so professionally, the marketing material you have. So that's why a lot of the questions we ask during the showing, that's how we do it. Got it. So you don't want to address them before you meet them? Now, how PRG teaches it, you know, I don't want to push our stuff. That's just how we do it. We want to show up and impress them so much that they want to answer these questions. Right, right. What about, like, do we do... Um, So, so how do you, how do you mitigate like the risk of meeting a buyer that's not at all qualified and just wanted to go look at the property and now you wasted two hours out of your day to, to go, to go view the property? That is correct. It, it could happen that way. And I would say most of the people we made up, they're only looking at one home. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really qualify them, but at the showing, I'm very strong with qualifying them. So for example, right, you want to see if they're pre-approved. So we'll take a look at the home and this is my pre-approval script. Hey, Emmanuel, have you been pre-approved already? Mm -hmm. uh, no, not yet. Awesome. You know, a lot of the times that's how our buyers come to us, right? You see homes online, then we take a tour. It's all really fun. Now it's very important to get pre-approved. And there's two reasons for that. There's a high reason and a low reason. The last thing we want is to start seeing homes fall in love and figure out it doesn't work for us. That's the low side. The high side is, hey, let's say, for example, we're looking at 800K homes and you can afford up to 1.2. Doesn't mean you have to go that high, but while you're wasting your time looking at 800K, the 1.2 opportunities are going away. So the pre-approval is going to give you clarity. The clarity is going to allow you to make a decision. I'm gonna send you my two lenders. Definitely get in touch with them. Fill out the application, it takes 10 minutes. And then we could start seeing more homes. Got it, got it. So I feel like when you deliver that in person, with yeah. your energy, with your motions, like they want to do it. Right, right, right. I think your style is much more, um, it's uh, it's very like customer service oriented, right? It, it just sounds like you work at like a corporation and you're just trying to help them as a customer service in customer service. So I think that's a great way to, to kind of frame it. Instead of just saying, this is why you need to get pre-approved because uh, my script for that is usually um, one thing, you know, you definitely want to understand what you're comfortable with, right? What you're getting yourself into, what your mortgage payment will look like. And most of the time when you're viewing properties, this house may sell in the next one or two days. You want to have a pre-approval to understand that you, you are, have the possibility of being approved by a lender and getting that loan so you can move on this property. Right. Um, but I think the way that you framed it, your, your tidbits there are, are definitely uh, are helpful. Um, let's see. Should, should we do a little bit more role play? Would you guys want to see that? Catherine, Jerry, Vivian? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's I think. 
I think, uh, could we focus less on Zillow Flex because I, I'm not on that yet? Sure, and, sure, sure. Yeah. Like, let's let's do a uh, let's do one quick call that's uh, kind of like a cold prospecting. And I, I really like to hear. I want to hear Thomas's viewpoint because I think within our group we do a lot of trainings within each other, right? And we try to take our own skills. But Thomas is bringing in like something very very fresh that I haven't heard from other agents just as his flows and mannerisms i think would help so if thomas do you have do you have a little bit more time today i know you're busy yeah okay cool. i have a call at one so i got 30 40 more minutes cool ha thomas so a lot of the leads that we're working with right are are uh especially these newer agents they're calling directly from the pond right so when you're when you're calling a, a lead that has uh that that is nurturing how would you go about that do you just follow up would you follow this lp mama in that scenario too and so this is a pond lead that you are just calling yeah mm -hmm. like a cold lead and so how does the lead come in it's like a flex lead that an online lead just, yeah an online lead that yeah. hasn't been touched in a while i would say the lp mama is, is after the fact, but of course the, the intro to that call is, hey, how are you doing? Is there any updates to your home search? I know we spoke at one point in time, right? Um, I think a better question actually, before we start going in circles is, uh, Jerry, what, what are kind of the issues you're having with or the objections you're facing when you're calling these pawn leads that you're, that you're meeting with? Let's kind of tackle that first. Um, I've actually been okay. Um, okay. Mostly because I've been calling nurtures and stuff that it, I'm not calling like directly from the pond. Okay. Uh, but I would say, um, let's see. I know, just like rebuttals in general, still kind of uh, like, kind of, uh, oh, we're waiting for the market to crash. Yeah. Like um, stuff where I feel like I require knowledge and I don't have it at this point yet mm -hmm. uh my, my go-to is always like oh we'll talk about that in the zoom meeting but uh sure, sure. basically like anytime they ask about the market essentially yeah so in regard to the market i would i would the way that i do it i circle back to the appointment and look over their motivation right what is it mr client that you're waiting on the market to do so you can so you can move forward right um, if they're really fixed on on the market, what what are your thoughts? What have you been seeing that think that you may think that the market may crash? I would love to hop on a Zoom call so we can discuss this further, right? So you kind of book an appointment to to go over some stats, if you will, um, and go over your thoughts and, and and kind of show them on screen what what the options are, right? If you were to wait, et cetera. Uh, if interest rates were to rise, if prices were to come down, things like that, some scenarios there. But Thomas, how would you how would you tackle that question? Like, hey, Thomas, I want to buy, man. I I'm fully approved. I have the money, but I just want the market. I'm waiting for the market to crash. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me see if I can link this. Copy. Okay. Seppi. Yeah. Check your phone real quick. Oh yeah. Let me uh let me test it. So my team, we just made a marketing image about that specific topic. And if you take a look at it, a million dollar home right now with our interest rates, your monthly payment is going to be 5,345. Uh -huh. Now let's say the market crashes and this home drops to 930,000. Yeah. With the increased interest rate, your monthly payment is actually going to be even higher. Mm -hmm. So once we get to talking about price my script is hey emmanuel uh well it's a really long script because we talk about so many things but basically emmanuel i understand the price is very important and this is what i tell my buyers to really help them beat the other's buyers because it's, it's a very tough market number one this million dollar home guess what you're never going to pay a million dollars Mm -hmm. unless you live in here for 30 years mm -hmm. what you're going to do is pay a fraction of that cost so let's say in the bay area you live here for 15 years and let's say during those 15 years the price doesn't appreciate how crazy is that in the bay area right 
Well, let's say the price is only a million when you sell it in 15 years. That means you live in a million dollar home for 15 years for free because that money went back into your pocket. So the price is not important. The price is just a number. And number two, it's going to come down to your monthly payments. If these two factors are met, number one, you love the home. And number two, your payments are comfortable. Then the price doesn't matter. That's the right place. Mm-hmm. And we go more into about, especially first time home buyers, it's all about comfort. And mm-hmm. comfort could be how big the home is, how remodeled it is, how close to school, how close to commute. It's all about comfort because you're going to be in that home for five to seven years. You're going to move on to the next home and the next home. This is not going to be the perfect home. Mm-hmm. So we just want to find a home that you love and the payments are comfortable. If that happens, then it's the right home. And would you would you have this conversation on the call or would you want to save like such a long-winded script for like a exactly. month? So I, I, I literally do nothing on the second call. Okay. I want to show up, look super good, impress them with my scripts. And that way they get value from you. So when we show up to our showings, we have a booklet that we printed out. We also have a piece of paper which shows the team sales from the last month. So I, I hand it to them. Hey, Emmanuel, I know you know the market is hot. Last month, we helped 30 clients reach their real estate goals. And we know we can help you do that as well. Mm, that's a good so one. What we do after that Zillow showing, we're going to set up a consultation, a Zoom consultation, about 30 to 40 minutes. And that's kind of like that second call. We're, we're going to go over everything. Right, 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 right. I think, I think one thing that I got from yours is, because uh, we were talking about a cold lead that says the market's going to crash, right? W- one thing that you pointed out is um, about the price not mattering, right? Okay, Mr. Seller, I completely understand. Everyone thinks the market's going to crash. I will hope the market's going to crash too, right? Because then I'll have some opportunity to buy a house of my own, right? But if you're able to find the house, that fits your needs and the monthly payment is comfortable to you and what your current financial situation is, would you be interested in at least entertaining that house as an option, right? Um, And then going from there, that's when you can can get, go down the LP mama, right? What does that house need to look like for you? So it is that ideal property, right? What does your monthly payment need to look like for you to be comfortable with paying this house monthly, right? And then based off of that, you go into, to like pre-approval and stuff like that. What is your ideal price, right? They can tell you anything. They can tell you a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, right? Um, then you you'll just agree. Okay, Mr. Buyer, why don't we set up a, a Zoom call so we can go over what your goals are based off of what you just told me and see what options the market provides in your favor, right? If it doesn't work out, we can put together a plan, right? So you don't necessarily need to just shoot a whole bunch of market stats and information and examples to them on that call. You just need to figure out a way and uh, identifying their issue, which, which most likely if they're saying they want the market to crash, they weren't able to find the price that they want or they weren't able to find the home that they want, right? So identify that and see if that's a real issue to them. And then uh, that's your end to book the appointment and, and tell them that that is what you're going to discuss if you were to meet with me, right? Um, I think there was a, a, a fruit a fruit salad script that Mitch had, had shared, right? You would say you, you could you can mix that up. Uh, I can link that in in the chat right now. And Emmanuel, kind of, question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know why people are talking about a crash? There's I think I think there's a few main points. There is the of course the news is going to like shake everyone up right there is the the uh forbearance issue that people are kind of just throwing around right now without knowing real numbers um interest rates coming up and um i think i think a lot of people nowadays just feel like the market the prices are just too high that like this can't sustain for longer i mean what are your thoughts i personally feel like people like to use the word crash because 2008 was so recent right if 2008 never happened i don't think people would ever use that term crash mm-hmm. and so for the newer agents it's very important to understand why the market crashed 
-hmm. Number one, huge amount of supply, which is complete opposite of right now. Number two, banks were giving out loans to unqualified people. People were lying on their applications. All this stuff is no longer happening. Right. Also, a script that I've been using during COVID is, hey, Emmanuel, I know you're looking to buy a place. I've lived in the Bay Area forever. I'm sure you have. You know, two things last year actually happened that people have been talking about forever. Number one, what if jobs leave the Bay Area? Number two, what if people leave the Bay Area? Mm -hmm. And last year, these two things actually happened. And what's happened to real estate prices? They've gone up. Yep, that's it. So you want to kind of educate, I mean, any type of objection, it's always because of risk, right? Mm -hmm. If the risk was eliminated, I think everyone would buy if they're qualified and motivated. So mm -hmm. you got to, for Jerry, like he was saying, right, he doesn't know what to say. It's a really good idea when you get the objection to write it down, what the objection is, because there's only so many objections someone can give you. It's not like, hey, an alien landed and they told me not to buy, right? That's not <laughs> the objection. There's only 10 objections out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, exactly. So you just got to flush it out and you got to have like multiple answers for each of those. That's good. That's definitely that's a good high level. Yeah, that's a good one. And I think um, you made a, a, a super good point right there. It's um, clients or, or clients or leads or whatever you want to call them is they go off what go their off. friends say, what the news say, but ha like 99.9% .9 of the time, they have not a can clue as to what's going on. They're like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm just, I heard that the, you know, market's gonna bubble, real estate's gonna crash, you know, Elon Musk is going to Texas, blah, blah, right? And then after that, they're just, it's just cut, you know, they, like you, like you said, you know, like everybody's expectation was 2020, COVID hit, right? 2021, everybody was like, oh, the market's gonna crash, you know, there's gonna be a housing bubble. Like Thomas said, that was the expectation for that whole year of 2021. It never happened. Right. A lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of people don't even know why the interest rates went low. Right. You know, it's it, it's it's the probability of saying, hey, if we lower interest rate, it incentivizes more people to buy, put more money out there in the world. Right. So a lot of people like most people don't even know why interest rates drop. Right. Like <laughs> and it, it can be a, a multitude of different things, but it's kind of what what, what he said. It's it's being able to provide that information just to break what they know initially from the news or their friends or family is where they get their information from hardly ever talking to a realtor right you don't a realtor is not going to say hey the market's going to crash right so you made I, some i think that those that thomas your scripts are like really good and i think that's something that everyone should internalize for when you're meeting with your clients but i also i also want to warn you guys like when you are especially because a lot of you guys are newer when you are setting these appointments try not to get stuck on these really lengthy conversations where you're trying to combat everything that they're saying and you're like no this is right and and because nobody wants to meet with somebody that you're you're breaking rapport with you're telling them their thoughts are wrong like you know just go ahead and be like hey look it sounds like you have some really like valid market concerns when you meet with our team on thursday let's talk about this and let let us uh, show you why and then that way you're still like dangling that information you're acknowledging it you're not ignoring it mm -hmm. and then you're acknowledging that and deferring it so that when you have your senior agent with you you guys we can back you up and we can go through all this because you don't want to start like spouting something that oh i remember thomas just told me this and then they push back with another thing and you're like now you're stuck because you're like oh shit i don't, I don't really know so, you know, let's, let's get, I think, practicing, you know, even this team, if you guys want to be proactive, let's link up, you know, Thomas has a really good script, maybe if he could, you know, help put that down on paper, we can start training on that one as well. And just, uh, and maybe just even just understanding the theory of what he's saying will just help you guys. Um, but that all that stuff comes over time. I think the, the point is set the appointment and let us, you know, help you guys close it. Yeah, I think one of the main things I think is great. I'm so happy that Thomas joined because it gives us a fresh point of view and his style is way different from all of ours, right? Even though the material is the same. But one thing that's consistent that Thomas says is that he does not try to sell someone over the phone, right? He wants to meet someone in person. And that's when that's when the show starts, right? That's when you start diving deeper, right? So when you get these rebuttals, keep in mind, I, I may have an answer to this question or I may be able to 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 beat this person to the punch or like I'm, I'm correct keep in mind that the objective is to book the appointment 
right? So let your guard down. Just just agree with them. That's a great uh, that's a great concern. Like Z said, it sounds like you have a lot of questions. Why don't we set uh, put to, uh, put together a meeting so we can discuss further and see if this even makes sense? Sound fair, right? And then go on from there, right? So awesome. Anything else? I think we're about an hour uh, in right now. I think we're this is a great training for you guys. Um, did did anyone learn anything new? Anything that they want to chime in? Tyler, what are your thoughts? I know you're heavy on the scripts when you started. I mean, Tyler was was killing it with prospecting. Like, so can you guys do a role play that includes like objections? Oh, okay, sure. Um, let's see. Thomas, Thomas, do you have time to do one more? Sure. With uh, Zahara. Okay. Zahara, are you free to to add some? No. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll do it with you, Thomas. I'll let AJ do it since they already heard you and Thomas. Sorry, I have to take this. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right, Thomas. I'll do it with you, Thomas. I, I had some harder objections. Um, let's skip to the objection, Thomas. Um, yeah, man, I'm looking to to purchase a house. I have the money. My my wife and kids are ready to move, but man, I just I just think the market's gonna crash. So I think I want to wait till next year. Now, I have your phone number, so I'll, I'll I'll hit you up when I'm ready. Awesome, and thank you for that concern, Emmanuel. It sounds like you don't know where the market is going this year, and you know you want to wait it out to see if it's a better market next year. A lot of the buyers that we work with have the same concern you have because it is a scary market. However, what we're seeing with a lot of our clients is once they get into a home, there's instant equity as the market is moving forward. So it's very important to remember that you are a buyer for a split, spec, a split second in time. You're a buyer for a split second. And once you're a buyer, then you're a homeowner for 10 years. So it's actually very good that prices are up and it's very competitive because that means it's a strong market. Imagine in a down market, it's actually much harder to buy because you have no idea where things are going. Now, again, I know it's your money. What I always tell my buyers is, hey, if I could sign on the dotted line for you, we would never lose, right? And that's the benefit of working with us at PRG. Every month, we help about 30 clients reach their real estate goals. So let's say the market is about to drop. We have our ear to the ground and we'll definitely be able to let you know. That's good. That's good. Maybe also end off with, uh, oh, let's keep going. Okay, Thomas. Uh, well, I think I'm just going to wait for now still. I think I still want to wait, man. Hey, totally understandable, Emmanuel. And is that because you're not sure about your down payment yet? Uh, you're not sure about the monthly payments? Are you I just, with yeah, Thomas. I just don't want to buy a house and then the next couple of years now now my house is worth like uh seventy percent of what I bought it for. That's I know I that's that's crazy. And how long have you been living in the Bay uh, Bay Area, Emmanuel? Uh, I've been living in the Bay my whole life, man. Twenty three nice. years old, so my whole life, yeah. Nice. And I'm sure you've seen the market go up as I have. Now, there's not going to be many realtors that tell you this, mm -hmm. but there is a benefit to renting. Mm -hmm. The benefit is mobility. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a lot of friends. I'm sure you have a lot of friends. They're always looking for a new job and they're looking for, right? It could be here in the Bay Area, it could be elsewhere. Right. And if that's your case, I agree, you should keep on renting. Mm -hmm. But once you've figured out either family situation or job situation, that this is where you want to be, then it makes sense to buy. Because right now, your money is just going down the drain. Got it. And then I bring you back to the price is not important because. You know, that price is going back to you, even if the home doesn't appreciate, mm -hmm. you still get money back. Right, right. Sounds good. Um, the only, I have a feedback. Wait, are you guys done? Yeah, I'd say we're, yeah. yeah I think oh, we're sorry, done. I didn't know if you were still going. Go, keep going. Okay, Thomas, so yeah, I think right now, so, I mean, so you're saying if I am looking for a new job and, and are still mobile in my life, I should keep renting. That that's that's kind of where 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 you're. You know, at. Emmanuel, you're an adult. I know you can make your own <laughs> decisions, right? I I can't see your finances. I have no idea. Yeah. Does it make sense to keep renting? That's a decision you're going to have to make. But if you are looking like if you want to be mobile and you don't want to be locked down yet, that's totally okay. Yeah. And we have a couple of videos about the home buying process. 
you have some of our client reviews because it is a very scary situation. Right. And being with PRG, again, we work with so many people. If yeah. the market really is crashing, you know, we're going to let you know. But yeah. as of right now, you know, just the client we got in last month, their home has already gone up 10,000. And we right. see that, you know, with a lot of buyers. That's true. That's true. I did see that one of my, that, that happened to one of my friends, but it's still scary, but I appreciate your feedback. Absolutely. Um, I think, I think, because right now we're actually, we have roots here. So we're, we're planning to grow our family. I think it might be the best time to, to, to at least consider it. So. Yep. And we'll go over that on a consultation. We'll go over the entire market and make sure it's the right decision for you and your family. Sounds good. Okay. So let's book it. Sounds cool. good. Thomas, do you usually do buyer consultations uh, with your Yeah, so that's something we've been implementing this past year. Okay. So what it is, is short Zillow call, set the appointment, do the appointment, give the marketing, get them locked in, schedule mm -hmm. the free consult, mm -hmm. and go from there. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Cool. Z, uh, you, had, you had some feedback? Yeah, um, the only feedback I have for... Um, everybody on this call, and I notice a lot of junior agents do this, um, and sometimes we do it as well, but I would really urge everybody, when you ask your client a question, do not give them options of answers. Just ask the question and just let them answer. Uh, because when you're like, Thomas asked like, oh, you know, what's the hold of? And then he started like listing on the thing. It's easy for them to just be like, yeah, that's what it is, down payment, whatever, and not tell the truth. Let's not try to diagnose them. Let's just let them tell us. And I see, I hear it a lot on consults too. We're like, ask a question and then we'll start like filling in the, I think you guys just don't like quiet, like silence, but just make sure you're allowing your clients to speak and really listen to them. I do, so that. That, I do that sometimes, I like that. to be honest. Like you'll be like, uh, so what are your issues? Is it down payment? Is yeah. it, you know, your situation? more so just asking you know what what is your situation right now and then just stop talking yeah if you ask <laughs> me if it's a good time for you to buy well tell me what's your situation yep right zip i i've okay. been doing that a lot with uh with uh listing agents and clients just asking a question and shutting up right because they're going to keep talking right and the more information that you can get is leverage for you yep right? the first person the person to talk the most loses at the end of the day first person to say a number loses right so um because you could call a listing agent and be like, hey, what kind of offers do you guys have? And be quiet. Or you can be like, what kind of offers do you have? Are you over 1.2? And they're like, oh, yeah, we're 1.2. And then, and then they might have told you more, but you just already gave some sort of indication. Now now they don't really say anything. So it's just, it'll help you guys in all scenarios. Just if you're going to ask a question and you want an answer, just wait for that person to give it to you. Good. That's good. That's outside of scripts. That's more so like skills, right? It's just like communication skills more so, right? Um, cool. Cool. I think that was great, Thomas. I, I'm excited to have you more on these trainings if you're if you're willing to help out, you know. Um, and I think agents, if you're open to, you know, Thomas, if you're open, feel free to reach out to Thomas if you have any questions. Um, he's a great team leader. I've known Thomas for a while. I know Zahara's known Thomas. He's a killer. He's a killer. So you guys are killers. We're gonna yeah. kill it. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're excited to help out. Um, all work together. And I, I love this, I love this this group where we can just bounce off ideas off of each other, right? In other, in other teams, this is gonna be a formal training where I'm the only one talking, but I wanna hear what your guys' feedback is, right? So we can all help each other out. So I appreciate it. Um, ending off uh, with this note, it is all about setting the appointment, right? You are not going to force anyone to do anything over a cell phone call, right? I know none of us would be sold over the phone over on anything. The best salesman could not sell me on anything over the phone, right? So keep in mind, we're here to just give them the information. That information is your key into figuring out where they, where they need to be. Um, and you're only going to do that with an appointment. So look, look to book the appointment, um, internalize these scripts. If you have any questions, if you want to do separate role play with anyone in here, I'm sure we're all open. I'm definitely open. If you guys ever need anything and want to do some role play, hit me up. Um, and we can go from there. Cool. Any anything that you guys want to end off with? Yes. If you're if you were in this training today, I would strongly I can't force you guys, but I would strongly urge you guys to sync up with the other people on this call, especially you newer guys, and set some time for prospecting this week. It's Wednesday. You can do like 
at least a few times a prospect or a, a role play, sorry, uh, before the week is done. And that's what we used to do, AJ and I, me and Maudie, me and Seppi, me and Alfredo, when we were the only ones in the office, we would do our call sessions in the morning, then we would eat, and then we would just like sit in the conference room and like push each other, give each other really hard rebuttals because no one's going to be as hard as we are on each other. Once you get out there on the real calls, it's going to be a lot easier. I promise. And if you really want to grow as, uh, in terms of cold calling and prospecting, um, record your calls, right? Uh, you can record your calls on FirePoint. And you, if you know that that call was tough, uh, we can always, uh, you know, do one-on-ones or kind of just analyze that specific call and see where you can improve. You know, I know it's cringy to hear yourself talk, uh, especially when it's a bad call, but it, you got to do what you got to do to improve, right? So um, awesome. AJ, anything? Thomas, and any end off uh, statements? Tyler, anything? I appreciate you guys coming here um, on the call. Um, showing up is definitely one of, uh, of, of the ways that you succeed. That's the first part, right? Showing up, being present, being coachable, being open to learn. So glad you guys are here and uh, looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Let me know if you guys need anything.